Welcome to Season 4, Episode 4 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak life, encouragement, and truth into the minds and hearts of educators and get you energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm going to share some thoughts on how to deal with the principal who just doesn't get it and doesn't support you. Visit truthforteachers.com to get the transcript, links to recommended resources, and to share your thoughts on the show. This episode is sponsored by Kidum, a standards-based platform helping teachers personalize learning. With Kidum, teachers gain access to an unlimited library of content with beautiful, actionable reports. And the best part? Kidum is free. Visit kidum.co to learn more. That's K-I-D-D-O-M dot C-O. So today's episode is inspired by a lot of different emails and messages that I've gotten from teachers about a wide range of problems that they're having with administrators. Some of these teachers feel like their principals place too much emphasis on testing and try to standardize teaching so that there's no freedom for the teachers to be creative or exercise their professional judgment, and there's no freedom for kids to be kids. Other people who've written to me simply don't feel supported by their admins. They feel like they're just workhorses who continually have more and more demands stacked on their plates without any acknowledgement or appreciation of what they do. One teacher put it this way. She wrote, I want to be part of helping admins see that they should treat their teachers as though they're valued. How does a teacher do this? Now, it's not my intention for this to be a principal bashing episode. And I'm certain that anyone with a principal's podcast could certainly do an episode about how to deal with teachers who just don't get it. So let me be clear that there are many amazing administrators out there, and I don't mean to discredit them in any way. But the teachers who have great admins don't need my help. This episode is for the teachers who aren't fortunate to work with these wonderful principals, who are visionaries, who get it, who make the teachers feel supported and valued. So I want to share a few things that those teachers can consider to improve their situation. So let's start by first acknowledging that your principal gets things that you don't. No matter how oblivious or out of touch an administrator might seem, she or he has insight into the big picture of running the school that you can't possibly have. She or he has insider knowledge of things that you simply don't know. So the same way that students will say to us, that's not fair, why can't we just do it this way? Because they're just so sure they have the same information we do. We're clearly making the wrong decision about how things should be done in their minds, right? That's how we sometimes are as teachers. We forget that the principal knows stuff we don't know and is looking out for a greater good. We don't realize how the tiny little changes in policies that we're suggesting, which seems like it would benefit everyone, would actually have a domino effect in a lot of other areas and create new problems. We also forget that many of the ideas that seem to be coming from the principal are actually mandates from the district or from the state. And this is like our students assuming that every test that we give them was our idea. We wanted to give the test. Or that every rule we enforce was something that we just dreamed up ourselves. Students have no idea how many things their teachers are more or less forced to do because of administration. And likewise, teachers have no idea how many things principals are more or less forced to do because of parental pressure or superintendent's mandates or laws at the state level. A lot of bad ideas may be implemented in your school, but I can guarantee that not all of them, probably not even most of them, were initiated by your principal. So an administrator may appear to be oblivious or to oppose something that seems like common sense, but people always have reasons for doing the things they do. It may not be right. A good reason is not the same as a right reason. If the person's hands are tied, they have no choice. That's a good reason, even if it's not right. But start with the assumption that your administrators have good reasons for deciding things the way they do. Begin at that place rather than with the opinion that she or he is just this bumbling idiot with no leadership skills. And I think if you're able to shift your mindset there, you'll find that this move toward empathy really lessens some of the frustration that you feel. In fact, whenever you're trying to work with a difficult person or a person who thinks very differently from you, you always want to try to get to a place of empathy where you can appreciate the principle of separate realities. Now, I've written an entire chapter about this in my book, Awakened, Change Your Mindset to Transform Your Teaching. The idea of separate realities is that 
people's opinions and decisions and values are all based on their unique experiences in life. You can't possibly see the world as your principal does because you haven't had all the same life experiences that she or he has had. You are truly living in separate realities, and that will always be true. And yet, that doesn't preclude you from working together. You can work to understand and appreciate one another's separate realities, those unique viewpoints, and realize that other people's choices do make sense within the context of their separate reality. Once you get to that place, it's not nearly as irritating to deal with people who see the world differently than you do. You're able to have a genuine understanding of their position. So when you feel like your principal just doesn't get it, start by reminding yourself that she or he gets things that you do not and has reasons, probably good reasons, even if they're not right reasons, for doing things the way they're done. The second step is to stop complaining and start creating change. Complaining does nothing but kill your energy and your enthusiasm. We as human beings have to stop justifying our love of complaining and pretending like it somehow makes us feel better. Maybe it would if we could just do it in small doses, but complaining is like a disease. It worsens over time and it spreads virally to almost everyone who comes in contact with it. Complaining makes you feel like your situation is hopeless because not only are you upset, but everyone around you also sees there's a huge problem and is upset. And you can just work yourself into this frenzy together. as Each new tale of injustice and frustration and ridiculousness is added to the collective story. And the helplessness and the anger that you feel just builds and builds with no healthy outlet for expression other than more complaining. So guess where all that frustration goes? into the classroom, into your interactions with students. And it probably goes home with you at the end of the day where you poison your marriage and the relationships you have with your own children too. It is time that we get real about how this culture of complaining is rotting away our schools, our classrooms, our homes. You cannot let your frustration with your administrators poison the lives of everyone who spends time with you. If you're in a school where morale is already in the toilet, you can't afford to waste a single day complaining about your administration. If you're complaining every day, you are part of the problem. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you're providing a sounding board for your frustrated colleagues. The reality is you're dragging them down. Someone who's discouraged does not need to hear more stories of discouragement. They need someone to empower them. And if you all just sit around waiting for someone else to come in and take on that role, change will never come. So go ahead and confide in someone you trust and get things off your chest when you're upset. But you don't need to keep repeating your stories of frustration to everyone who will listen. You don't need to keep going back and rehashing. You've got to move into problem-solving mode as soon as you possibly can. Your job is just too important for you to allow your focus and your energy to be drained by complaining and replaying conflicts in your mind and anticipating problems. Shift from thinking, this is ridiculous, I can't believe I have to deal with this, to thinking, what are we going to do about it? Funnel the anger and the frustration into something that's productive. If you want your administrators to value the teachers, the teachers can start by valuing the administrators. Any marriage counselor will tell you that if you want to create new patterns for how you treat one another in a relationship, you can't sit back and wait for the other person to take the lead even if they were wrong and you were right. And you can't just do one nice thing and say, well, I tried, didn't work, he didn't reciprocate, it's hopeless. In any relationship with anyone, if you want to get out of the pattern of mistreating one another, the person who wants to create change can start setting a new precedent and be determined to shift that dynamic through his or her own actions. So get to that place of appreciating separate realities and show respect to your principal. Smile genuinely. Give genuine compliments. Do things that make his or her job easier. Do things that make him or her look good. Stop the eye rolling. Stop the muttering under your breath. Stop waiting until the last minute to do things that they requested. Let your administrator feel your support. Feel that you value him or her. I mean, that's probably a pretty foreign feeling on his or her end too, you know? Let the past be the past. You shift the dynamic, regardless of how he or she responds. Kill him with kindness, as they say, right? And let it be genuine. 
you can do that, even though it's hard. Remind yourself that you're not doing it for him or her. You're doing it for you and your students and your family. If you want to change a toxic school culture, let that change begin with you. If the problem is that your principal is micromanaging you and mandating extra testing and data collection and just in general making it harder for you to focus on student learning, then creating change is even more imperative. You cannot wait for school leadership to mandate or sanction what's best for kids. If something you're being told to do in your classroom is keeping you awake at night because you know it's killing your students' love of learning and it's making you and the kids just miserable every day, then isn't it worth taking a risk and figuring out a better way? You may not even need to take a public stand. Although if you're showing more respect and a better attitude toward your principal lately, she or he is going to be more likely to hear you and to compromise. So that could be worth trying. But what I'm really telling you to do is close your door and teach. Ask for forgiveness rather than permission. This is the motto that tens of thousands of veteran teachers live by every day. It's the only thing that's enabled them to stay in our profession as long as they have. That stubborn determinedness to do what they know their students need, no matter how many different policies come and go which are trying to interfere. They smile, they nod, they document whatever's supposed to be documented, and then they do what their students need them to do. You see, change doesn't have to come from a mandate. Grassroots change made one teacher at a time, one classroom at a time. That can be the most powerful way to transform school culture. That's what can have the biggest impact on students. So do what you know is best and prove your ideas work. And then you can bring the research and the data to your principal and back up your practices. Then you can see if you can get one other colleague on board to do what's best for kids. And then you have even more evidence that the strategies you want to use do work with your student population. You can build from there. It really is simpler than you think to start a grassroots movement in your school, one teacher at a time, and let that change start with you. Now, if you're listening to this and you're thinking to yourself, this could never work at my school. You don't know my principal. It's hopeless. I have already done everything that I can do then quite frankly, it's probably time to go work somewhere else. If you really hate working for your principal and you just don't see things ever getting better under his or her leadership, then leave. Let's be real. There are some situations that are just not going to get better, barring some sort of divine intervention. There are principals who don't want to change with the times and the bureaucracy of the school system doesn't force them to. There are principals who are grossly incompetent There are those who will make your job much more difficult than it needs to be. This is absolutely a reality. I know. I've experienced it firsthand. I've witnessed it happening to many other teachers with my own eyes. I know this happens. When you get to the point where you feel like you have done all that you can do in your school, you'll know it. You'll know in your heart if you've really done as much good as you can and it's time to move on. And when you get to that place Start exploring your options so that you can make a thoughtful decision when the right opportunity comes along. There's a lot of schools out there, and many of them, if not most of them, are wonderful places to teach and learn. There are thousands of principals out there who are inspiring and supportive and care about their kids and teachers. Don't assume that it's terrible everywhere else, so you might as well just stay where you're at. I've experienced this firsthand too. It is not terrible everywhere, I promise you. There are places where you can love teaching again. Now, I know that finding another teaching position is easier said than done, but remember, this is your life that we're talking about. If your soul is being crushed in your current job, why in the world are you letting anything keep you there? There's nothing more frustrating to me than to receive an email from a teacher who says she's killing the love of learning for her students, she hates her job, but she has a million excuses of why it can never be another way. And she's just doomed to be stuck in this awful job working for this awful principal forever. You get one shot at this life. Don't waste it. If you are waiting for your principal to quit or for the perfect job to fall in your lap, you are wasting your life. Go create the life you want to live. Advocate for yourself and for your students. Go make a difference in another school or go make a difference in education outside the system. Ultimately, that's what I decided to do. 
I got tired of the restrictions and I wanted to carve out my own path. That's exactly what I've done. And I'm not anyone special. I didn't have any unique opportunities available to me. I just created a website to share teaching ideas and help other teachers and let things grow from there. If I can make my own path, you can do it too. So if you're miserable, go. Don't let obligations to your school community keep you from fulfilling your dreams. Your students deserve to have a happy teacher. And if you're unhappy and you're bringing your misery into the classroom every single day, you're not doing them any favors by sticking around and maintaining the status quo. So let's think about what the best course of action is for you. And that's probably what you're wondering at this point. What is it that you should do? A lot of times teachers want to just share their horror stories with me and then ask my advice on whether they should quit or transfer to another school. What should they do? They want me to either be horrified with them and kind of give them permission to leave so they don't feel bad about it, or they're hopeful that I can offer some sort of magic bullet solution that they haven't considered yet, something that's going to make everything better. And I can't do either one of those things, unfortunately. I can only tell you to first make sure you are appreciating the concept of separate realities and you're seeing things from your principal's position. Make sure you're looking at the whole picture and you're trying to empathize with why decisions are being made the way that they are. And I can only tell you to make sure that you are part of the solution, not the problem. If you're complaining every day and you're walking around school with a sour look on your face, you are part of the problem. Make sure you're creating change within your own classroom and that you're doing what's best for kids. Make sure you're doing your part to build morale and to keep your colleagues inspired and motivated. If you're waiting for someone else to do this and saying, that's not my job, someone else should step up, then you haven't taken responsibility for your own actions yet. You haven't yet moved into problem-solving mode. You need to do that wholeheartedly for many months before you can make the determination about whether it's time to go. Cutting back on the complaining and just saying one nice thing about your principal does not constitute giving your all to create real change. If you've got a serious problem on your hands, you need to put in serious effort to solve it. Because your livelihood as an educator is at stake. The education of thousands of children is at stake. Create change in your classroom practices and in your attitude and in your actions toward your principal. And give it time for you to see results. Once those things are done, you and I think only you can make that decision about whether it's time to go. Know that there isn't any harm in exploring your other options rather than trying to wait out a bad principal, hoping that she's going to retire or that he's going to transfer to another school. I've seen close friends of mine go that route, and they've lost four, five, six, sometimes 10 years of their lives working for a boss that they hate just because the school is close to their house or they didn't want to start over someplace else. It has been heartbreaking for me to watch this. That's not a trade-off I've ever been willing to make personally because I've been willing to relocate. I've been willing to do whatever it takes to have a healthy working environment. I know my own worth. I believe that I deserve to work in a place where I'm appreciated and I'm supported. And I believe you deserve that too. So if you're struggling with the situation, I hope you will start today to create change in your attitude, in your actions, in your school morale, and in your life. Don't waste another day being miserable because of a principle. You can start the turnaround process today. I'm going to leave you with a motivational quote for the week ahead that I call the takeaway truth. And here's what I want you to remember this week. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. Thanks for listening. Have a fantastic week. You can do this. And remember, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it.